Frank, the first thing we want to talk about, uh, I think obviously, is, is how you came to, to develop this. What was your interest in it and what led you to developing this process? I think the biggest is the inconsistencies that I saw in guitars, in production guitars. Um, hu huge differences to my touch and to my ear. And I couldn't imagine why one guitar would sound so differently than another. And of course, Stradivarius came to mind because uh, Mr. Stradivarius had some concept or something that was different than all of the other builders. And I thought if it was the exact same construction but there was something different about the sound, there must be something there that hadn't been discovered. And that's where I focused all my effort. Everybody agrees that, that the older an instrument is, a stringed instrument in particular, guitars and violins in particular, the better they sound. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of you know, mystique around that. What, what's really going on? What's the science behind that? Well, the wood that becomes a guitar has been a tree for a uh, hundred years or more. And that tree has had to support its own weight and have to resist the swaying of the wind and to just cut it down and make a guitar out of it, it doesn't lose its memory. It still knows it's a tree. And it will maintain that memory for decades or more into the future. So if you take a tree and you play it and you age it, um, after 50 to 100 years, it will indeed sound good. Um, unfortunately, I won't be around in 100 years and I would like to play um, an instrument um, that's gonna be as good as it's ever gonna get and I want it in my hands now. Most guitarists have taken a lot of time and effort to select their guitars. They like the way their guitars sound, their individual tone. How will this affect my unique guitar's tone? Mm -hmm. well, let me equate that to something completely different. Let's take a look at an automobile. If you decide you want to buy a Mercedes or a BMW or a Lamborghini or a Bugatti, um, you obviously are buying that car for many characteristics. This process is much like that. Suppose the car were delivered to you with um, almost flat tires, that they were deflated with only 5 or 10 PSI in it. And you took delivery of that wonderful car, and you went around town with it and showed people all the gingerbread on it, look at all this fancy stuff, look at the interior. But what would the performance of that uh, automobile really be like with deflated tires on the track, on the street? Um, so what if I told you that I could greatly improve the vehicle that you've been driving around and my only secret is I know how to inflate the tires and now you have uh, a wonderful Lamborghini or Bugatti or Volkswagen or whatever it is that you drive. I haven't changed the car, I've just made the car, I found a weakness in the car and I found a way to make it a strength in the car and that's what we do with the guitar. So a Gibson will sound like a Gibson, a Martin will sound like a Martin. It will just sound more like that, significantly more like that than you've ever felt in your own guitar. So Frank, what about the physical nature of the process? I'm concerned about my guitar being altered or shaved or dipped in something. Uh, are you making structural or cosmetic changes to my guitar? Will it be subjected to any temperature or humidity changes? No, absolutely not. Um, there are no structural changes made to the guitar. The guitar as it is manufactured is the way it's returned to you. Um, the ambient temperature never exceeds normal room temperatures, 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. 40, 50 percent relative humidity. There are no, no extreme environmental uh, conditions that these instruments are subjected to. There are some extremely well-made boutique guitars out there, extremely expensive, that you know we would think that they're using the choice nicest tone woods and some already aged wood. Uh, I know recently you were asked to do a $16,000 tipping guitar. Tell me what is there possibly left to do to a guitar like that that's that sweet out of the box? Well, when we did the recordings, we all thought the same. How could this possibly be further improved? And I, I always had the confidence that it would, and I think the results are even uh, more spectacular than we thought. Uh, the bottom filled in. It had a very chimey feel to it, which is very different than a lot of the other instruments that we've, that we've uh, done the process on. The chiminess is still there, but it filled out in a richness and a fullness. Um, it's just more of what it was. It, it, it actually came up very, very nicely.